everyone, it's Nicole Spohr for Simon Says Stamp with the June 2020 edition of Making the Cut. Making the Cut is all about incorporating die cutting into your card making. Today I die cut this slimline nested rectangle using a Simon Says Stamp die and I die cut this from some smooth white cardstock. We will be combining all of my favorite things today. Some stenciling, some great background text grungy stamping, some texture with some grit texture paste, and then we are going to foil and die cut some beautiful butterflies to build this springish summer themed kind of floral and butterfly card. We're gonna finish with some stamped and die cut sentiments. To start, I have the Fading Florals Slimline Stencil from Simon Says Stamp. In order to be able to apply the positively saturated inks in all of these little areas and really um, add definition to these florals, I am using some small shader brushes from Waffle Flower. These work perfectly to get into all those little nooks and crannies and to really build some beautiful color for our background. I'm starting with the florals and leaves first and then we're going to add a little color around the edges and finish with some grungy stamping before cleaning our stencil, adding it back over the top, and adding some translucent texture paste to really give us some fantastic texture. I'm applying the Sunbeam Positively Saturated ink first to the flower petals. With the shader brushes, it works best to not do the normal kind of circular motion that we're used to with our brushes. I will do that a little bit, but you kind of want to do more of a paint, I guess, motion, if you will, to add that color. I put the base color of Sunbeam, and then I'm going to grab an angled and also a small shader brush, and I'm going to kind of pull from the center and of each petal out with the citrine colored positively saturated ink. This is going to give us some flower petals with multiple color. I love these blender brushes for being able to easily add more than one color to all those little areas. It definitely makes it so much quicker and easier. I'm also using the tonic magnetic system where you can use the magnets with your stencil to hold it in place while you're doing your work. This honestly makes it so much easier. Um, you could also use some pixie spray on the back of your stencil, but I didn't really feel like this stencil warranted the pixie spray. So I'm using the magnetic uh, or the magnets here on the magnetic board and it worked great. I didn't worry too much about the flower centers and getting ink in those because I will be using a darker color of ink. Now I'm going to take the little small shader brush and I am going to apply the citrine ink to all of these little buds. This is going to give us quite a few more little pops of yellow throughout. Because I want the focus to be on the butterflies that we're foiling and die cutting today, I picked a one color or color combination, I guess I should say, for the flowers and that's going to help them be a little bit more in the background and not be quite as busy. I'm going to take some sherbet ink and use a small blending brush to apply that to the centers of my flowers as well as take a small blending or angled blending brush pardon and kind of pull a little bit of the sherbet ink into the yellow for even more flower petal definition. I'm going to use that pretty sparingly but I am going to add a little of that to the flower petals as well. Next, I am going to take Sprout and Fairway inks. We're gonna start with Sprout and the larger bullet size shader brush, and I am going to add this to everything I can. The one area I felt like this size brush didn't work great was the stems, so I will take the smaller bullet size shader brush to those areas, like you can see right here. That way I'm not getting overlap of green into any of the yellow florals. I love the precision this allows for any kind of detailed stenciling. Let's go ahead and add color to all the rest of the greenery areas, all the leaves, all the stems, everywhere we can here on our background. Once I have the sprout I'm going to go ahead and take the fairway ink and we're going to use an angled brush again 
and add in some darker areas to really give some of our leaves some definition. I love the two-tone here, or not really two-tone, but the, the darker areas, the shading. Once we have all of our dark greenery in place, we do want to remove our stencil and clean it really well. I definitely recommending, recommend cleaning it because the next step with the stencil will be the translucent paste and you don't want to pick up any extra ink from that stencil and smear it, um, let's say green, into the yellow. So I did wipe it clean, but then I ended up going and uh, washing it as well just to kind of make sure. Next I'm going to take a blending brush and a little bit of sprout ink very very lightly and go around the edges to add some color. I want to be pretty careful to avoid the yellow areas as to not uh, add green ink over the top of that. But this is going to give our background a lot more interest. Next I'm going to take the Good Reading text distressy background stamp. I absolutely love this background stamp and I am going to ink it up just in little areas. I'm actually not going to apply ink all over the back nor did I even add this to my Misty. I want it to be really grungy. I'm just going to add ink in certain places and then press it over my slimline background. I'm going to do that again so it's not perfect. And there is some fantastic text to kind of grunge up that background even more. Now I will replace this stencil. I kind of added that the text background last minute. And we're going to take the translucent grit paste from Tim Holtz. And I thought I might use the, the stencil pal, but I ended up just using a palette knife and applying a nice thin coat of the grit paste all over. Now when it goes on and I remove the stencil, it's going to look um, a little cloudy, but as it dries, it's going to dry clear, showing that beautiful stenciled color, but it's going to have fantastic gritty texture. I love the texture of this. It almost looks like flock, uh, the flocking texture, but it has um, that great gritty texture to it that I think is going to be really, really cool. So you can see it looks a little bit opaque right now, and I'm going to set that aside to completely air dry. I've warmed up my Spellbinders Glimmer Hot Foil System, and we are going to use the Dancing Butterflies Hot Foil Plate plate from Simon Says Stamp. This is going to foil four butterflies at once. I'm using the polished brass foil, and once the machine has heated up all the way and I have got I've hit the button and everything. I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine. And then I'm going to peel the foil off to reveal these beautiful polished brass butterflies. Now originally I thought I would only use three of them, but I do end up using all four. You could even use more if you wanted to. I'm going to take the same shader brushes that I used for the background and I am going to apply color right over the foiling. The foiling is going to resist the ink. So once I'm done shading and adding my color, I will go ahead and remove any extra ink from the foiled areas with a dry microfiber cloth or a dry paper towel or something similar. On my first butterfly, I'm using cantaloupe and sherbet ink. So I added kind of an all over of cantaloupe and then from the center I'm pulling out with an angled shader brush with the sherbet color. All of these butterflies are going to be tone on tone, but the same kind of idea would apply if you wanted to add multiple colors to each butterfly. I want my butterflies to all be in shades of pinks, oranges, and reds so that they it just adds to that summery feel. Next we're using carnation and peony positively saturated inks. You can see again with the larger bullet tip brush, I'm applying the carnation color. Then I will take the angled brush and use some peony ink to pull from the center. 
Now, one thing about inking these before I die cut them, there is gonna be a slight white border all the way around. So I will go back with my shading brushes after I've die cut and add a little ink around the edges so it cleans it up a little bit because there is ink outside. If I wanted to be super careful, I probably could have kept the ink just inside of the foiled line with these shader brushes, but for this particular card, I really wanted the color going all the way out to the edge. Next, I'm using Cheeky and Blush. So this is gonna be kind of a, a peachy red. And my final color combination will be Watermelon and um, ch Cherry, sorry, inks, which I will use for the final butterfly, but I'm going to wait a little bit because like I said, I originally thought I would just do these three. I'm buffing off the ink from the top of the butterflies, grabbing the coordinating die, and we are going to die cut the butterfly images. I love that you can foil all four at once with the foil plate, and then you can die cut them all at once with the coordinating die. This is sold as a set from Simon Says Stamp, and it is amazing. So I'm simply going to run that through my die cutting machine, pop out the butterflies, and we can start to plan the rest of our card. Now I can see that the grit paste is starting to dry. I don't think it's quite all the way dry yet. You can still see some areas that are pretty opaque. Here's where I'm taking those blending brushes and just going around the outer white edges of each of my butterfly shapes to make sure that that color extends everywhere. It really kind of helps make it not look quite so sloppy. <laughs> Then I'm going to take a Signo Uniball white jelly roll pen and we are gonna add some detail to each of these butterfly images. This could not be any easier. Now, if you wanted to, you could also color in your butterflies with something like Copic markers. The foiled area will resist the um, markers as well. I love adding little white dot detail it really makes these butterflies shine. You could do this with any color of a pen that you would like, maybe even like a gold or to match kind of the gold foiling or the polished brass foiling. Uh, or if you foiled them in silver, you could also take a silver pen. I think that would be pretty or even black if you wanted to. I'm going to continue adding these little white dots all over my butterflies to really dress them up. One of my favorite things with butterflies on cards is making sure that you kind of still get that movement of the wings when you apply them to the card. So I'm going to share with you my very favorite technique for making sure that butterfly wings still kind of look like they are fluttering, I guess, if you will, for the card design. Um, and that's going to be for the two open butterflies. For the two side view butterflies, we're going to adhere those to our card with foam adhesive only. So I played around with lots of different greetings and ultimately I decided that I thought I really wanted to use all four butterflies so I had to rethink what sentiment I wanted to use for the card. You'll notice that there's a happy birthday here on the card but the card has actually ended up being a thank you card. That's something I always, almost always I should say, like to do when I'm creating cards is Create a design that could be used for multiple occasions. This could be a wedding card, an anniversary card, a sympathy card, birthday, thank you, friendship, hello. It would work for a multitude of occasions just by switching it out with your favorite greeting. I absolutely love that. You'll also notice this is the largest slimline nested rectangle die and it's slightly smaller than a slimline card base which a slimline card base measures three and a quarter by eight and a half inches. And you can buy pre-scored slimline card bases right here at Simon Says Stamp. I absolutely love all of the scored card bases and I keep a bunch of them on hand for all of my card making needs. I stamped the thanks and for everything greetings using the Simon Says Stamp Love Garden Greetings stamp set and VersaFine Onyx Black ink. If I want a bold, crisp, black stamped uh, sentiment or really anything, I really love the VersaFine ink. It is great for greetings, but definitely you don't want to use it for things like Copic markers. I also use the VersaFine ink if I am going to do some coloring with something like Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers.
Now, one of the fantastic things about this particular Love Garden Greeting stamp set is there's coordinating dies for the large greetings, and then I used my favorite sentiment labels die for the small for everything greeting. We're gonna place some foam adhesive on the back of our greetings and pop them in place on our card first before we start adding our butterflies. I'm going to adhere them um, a little lower than halfway down our slimline card base. You could take many of the same components that we've done in today's card and you could translate them into a standard A2 size card, even including the slimline stencil we used in the background, or you could grab a different floral stencil that's like a six by six stencil that will work be maybe a little better, I guess I should say, for a A2 size card. So you definitely don't have to do just a slimline card for this. I just kind of wanted to showcase a long skinny design, but almost everything here could just easily be transferred into any size card that you want, which I totally love. I've added both of my greetings with some foam adhesive, and then, like I mentioned a little bit ago, I'm going to adhere the side-facing butterflies with foam adhesive underneath. And I'm positioning them so it looks like they're fluttering through this flower garden, or maybe even trying to settle down and sit on a flower or leaf. For the butterflies with the wings out, the front facing, I am going to place a foam adhesive square under each wing and liquid glue in the center. Then I'm going to take some reverse tweezers and pinch that glue or pinch the butterfly right in the center and leave those reverse tweezers in place to help let that glue set. We're going to do this for each of the butterflies. This is a fantastic way to have the body of the butterfly directly on your card base and then have the wings fluttering um, or appearing to flutter, I should say, and sticking up a bit. I'm going to do that again for the other butterfly. And then we're ready to add a few additional embellishments and create a coordinating envelope to go with our card. I'll put some adhesive on my pre-scored slimline card base. And I love that white border all the way around since the largest slimline nested rectangle is slightly smaller than the slimline size. I am going to go ahead and put my tweezers back in place just to make sure that the body is sticking down to the card. In the center of three of the flowers, I'm going to add a small red heart accent. You guys know I always like to try to add a heart accent to a card and I think it just reinforces kind of that reddish color in the center of each of the flowers. Look at that texture, so much fun. I'm using my favorite Simon Says Stamp triangle trays to hold the Pretty Pink Posh Limeade Pearls and I'm gonna scatter a few of these pearls throughout. I purposely picked the green color as it kind of fades into the background, but it does add amazing texture. So it's not taking away from the butterflies or flowers. The best thing about the triangle tray is it easily will funnel your embellishments back into the storage bag or storage container. I absolutely love this card. It's so pretty and fun, and you could definitely change up the colors, maybe do blues and purples for your butterflies instead, and I think that would be gorgeous. I am gonna go back to my fading flowers stencils, and I'm only gonna stencil a portion. So this is again where the shading brushes come in so handy, and it's something you can't do with your traditional brushes. And I'm using a slimline stencil on an envelope which is bigger than a slimline card, so it's not going to fit exactly the same. Down in the lower um, left corner of my slimline envelope, I am applying the ink through just a portion of the stencil. And we're just gonna have a little glimpse of those florals in the corner, leaving plenty of room to do a return address in the upper left corner, the address in the center, and adding a stamp in the upper right. So I kind of try to avoid any areas where I need to have other information while still giving some fantastic interest to 
our coordinating envelope. You can buy all of your coordinating envelopes, slimline envelopes, and mini slimline envelopes right here at Simon Says Stamp, which I absolutely love. When I remove the stencil after adding the fairway ink over the sprout ink here, you're gonna see how perfectly our white stenciled envelope matches our beautiful card. I absolutely love this set. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this Simon Says Stamp Making the Cut video featuring foiling and die cutting. The supplies used are listed and linked below the video for your convenience. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.